<clears throat> I've been rowing and Alan's been looking and we're looking for spots like this right here. River's high and so far Alan's pattern, he's caught two nice fish and been real crisp eddy lines. And there aren't a lot of them out here in the mid part of the river. I know this is a good region. I always do well out here when it's low and clear. Um, <clears throat> but there are very few eddies and this is one of them so we're going from spot to spot to spot and I'm just staying on the oars to keep him in position to hit spots like this right here all right I think what was important there was the, the drop I let it I let the spinnerbait drop down into that narrow foam lane You know, I put it up in there, and if I'd have just burned it across the top surface, I wouldn't have gotten down in the water column enough to get at this one. They're, they're tight to cover, and I don't think it's a post-cold front thing. I think it's a, there's a lot of water zipping by, and they need to hold tight to the bottom. A little, nice little chunk. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was the eddy, the, the eddy we originally pulled up in. And it's a little further back where this foam. Alan, zoom in on the foam. And you can see up tight there's a nice spot. But then when you move back, there's this, this larger eddy of, you know, arg larger area of foam that's just settling there. And that's where I, I brought it in across the current seam and let it flutter down into that area. You know, waited till I felt it hit the bottom and then started up again. And he was on soon thereafter. Ned, okay, you got it? Alright, chartreuse clacker. Those two blades smacking together, catching on one another, doing funky things. You're a fat one! Mm, smells good. Nice river small mouth. See ya. Get another. We've moved into an area of the river where there's not as much of the, the ledge rock where we were up there catching them. And I wanted to switch to a bait that was really just designed to strain a lot of water. And it, we've actually moved into a little bit more stained water. Uh, and I'm using the Copper's Live Target Golden Shiner here. Any of these rattling, you know, lipless rattle baits are going to strain water and really call fish up from a great distance away, especially in that stained, stained area. We have on this shore the, the tributary that's running very clear, and we've moved out into um, a part of the river where it's a little more stained and I can see if we move over even further there's um, a band of truly muddy water over that way so uh, but I don't you know you can strain a lot of water with the spinnerbait but I prefer to do it with the with a lipless rattle bait like this hey Jeff we're not doing too well yeah it's it has slowed down. Um, I thought this rattle trap would would pick up a couple real aggressive ones, and these bigger eddies or these bigger areas of slack water, and it's really just it's not been happening. So, what do you want to do? I think we should move down and find some rocks. Same same stuff we were catching them in before. We got a bunch of grass islands come up. Um, we might have some good eddies down there. I'm, I'm certainly going to put away the treble hooks for fishing that stuff because that's a recipe for frustration. So you got your your spinner bait ready? Yes, I do. All right, I'm going to rust. You hit all those eddies on the way down, but we're going to make you know make tracks and find some rock, you know, big rock eddies. Put those spinner baits right up towards the top. We got a we got a pattern. We're just we've tried to branch out from it, and I don't think it's worth doing. I think. We want to just go and do what works. We've got one thing that works, that's all we need.
one workable pattern. Grass Island, a little scrub. Retrieving them in fast. And uh, it's, if it's zooming over their heads, they're not taking it. But if they're, you get those pauses. We talk about the same thing on the uh, Guan, actually covers it very well in the, in the fall pattern DVD. I think the verb he uses is yo yoing. He gets it in there, lifts it up, lets it flutter down. Lift it up. Just like a lot of largemouth guys fish a jig and let it sit there sometimes. But it's a heavy bottom contact presentation. Three quarter ounce assassinator clacker spinner bait. Let's see how long he is. He is eighteen and a hair. Fat. I feel good. See. We've been catching fish out of eddies. You know, downstream of the major uh, ledge rocks and grass grass patches. But I really like these corner pockets. That corner pocket down there has a lot of foam that's just sitting. And uh, just because it's not immediately downstream of something doesn't mean it doesn't qualify for what we're doing today. Down to the bottom, start it up. Ow! I missed him. I knew if I'd be stubborn enough with this, look how fat you are, that I'd eventually get something on this. I don't think it's a, you know, it's just not a prime pattern today, and I'm being hard-headed about it. I need to go back to chartreuse spinner baits. It's just like the finesse, you know, the, the small soft plastics on the, on the dragon head. You know, we've caught 17, 18, 19, 20, 20 inch fish today. I'm going back to this. We got a nice eddy right there. Look at that.